Hello and welcome to Get in the Lab. My name is Meg Levu. I'm really passionate about video. After three years of playing around, I finally got serious and started to really serve small business owners with their own video production. I've authored a bestseller and successfully funded it on Kickstarter. I speak about video on a regular basis and I have a wonderful online community called The Lab Rats. When I'm not creating videos, I'm climbing, cooking, and loving. In season five, I thought it was time to bring back interviews to the show. I have fun and candid conversations with business owners I admire and share that with the world. We all may be out there to make money, but we all crave to connect and inspire. This is Get in the Lab. What up, you lab rats? In this episode, we are talking to uh, Tamara. Tamara. Ah. <laughs> we are talking to Tamara. Thompson from Serious Take Productions. See that? I just, the, the mind goes to T and Tamara. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tamara. So um, we're talking to her from uh, Serious Take Productions. She's a, um, uh, a, a video producer, a director, a filmmaker. She was behind that film that you may have heard of. It's called Inspired by Eleven. Uh, it's a documentary about successful, inspiring entrepreneurs. I went to the, the premiere, the screening in Encinitas later, uh, earlier this year. It was a lot of fun. And the main theme behind this interview was building, building, building. Building your connections, building your network, building your foundation, building your means of, of transferring your service-based business into your now, you know, a, 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 a more upscale business. This interview really is based on the fact that you can really put forward the hustle, the drive, um, and the right kind of people and mix that all together and build something very incredible, very inspiring. So um, we really get along uh, as, as people who love video um, and as people who are driven by their own passion for video and how it can bring people together and bring people uh, to connect and to make stuff happen for themselves and their business. So um, I'm very um, excited and I'm very thrilled for you guys to, to see this interview and you're going to see that right now. All right, welcome guys back to the lab. Here we have Tamara Thompson. Tamara Thompson. <laughs> Okay, so let's, go over, let's, go, let's go over the tutorial on how to say your name correctly because I think yeah. the lab rats would, would uh, appreciate that. Yeah. Tamara, 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 Tamara. Yeah, no, I, you know, I always pronounce my name or I always give them the, the uh, little line, I'm Tamara with the camera. Tamara they, they, with the camera. They're like, oh, and I'm totally going to purchase that URL at some point. <laughs> They're like, you should do that. And then a friend of mine's like, I'm going to go buy it. So then you have to buy it for me for an upsell. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, I just think Tamara with the camera because there's Tamara, Tamara. And I always tell people, I'm like, well. I'm so sorry. I got that wrong. But I just went over that. I mean, I'm, so, you know, Jesus okay. Christ. It's okay. <laughs> you're, you're cool. It's all good. Tamara with the camera is here with us in the lab. I'm so grateful you guys are here. You guys are actually, you, you relocated to San Diego. You came from Orange Seattle, County, right? Orange County area, yeah. Okay, so not not San Diego. No, we we placed ourselves uh, in Aliso Viejo, about ten mm. minutes from Laguna Beach. Cool. We with all the clientele that we have and the relationships we're building with other entrepreneurs, it made sense to be in the middle of like L.A. as well as. Uh, San Diego, so we're just like basically straight shot, like up down. We love the Laguna, Laguna Beach area. It's just, oh yes, it's beautiful. So. And you've gone to the beach. You've done that whole thing already. Have you soaked up the we, California life? We actually haven't. You know, we we did before we moved down. All right, you're down. busy working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are constantly on the go, but we do want to take some downtime. So my um, business partner Danielle and I, like, we moved down here from Seattle. We actually moved down here two months ago, but we were living out of a suitcase. We were house sitting, pet sitting, Airbnb being it, and we currently still do not have our place furnished. But we we do have my cat there. Like <laughs> he's there. Step he's got one, a chair. cat is in the house. <laughs> he's okay. got a chair to look outside, to look at the fountain in the you know area, and and it's kind of cool there. But uh, yeah, it's been an adventure we're, we're planning to move our stuff that's in storage in Seattle down the next month but we've been so focused on on building relationships and working on post-production and stuff like that we've been building our team but mm. I've had to train people with mm. things and it's just a, ha, the timing hasn't been right so I, I was like we're just gonna focus on being here we have air mattresses we <laughs> we have a table that has our desk set up we have suitcases in the other room we got our camera gear like 
we're, we're set for the moment. <laughs> we got a washer <laughs> and dryer like and life. a refrigerator <laughs> at this point because the first week we didn't. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, it sounds like our life. Uh, you know, just your gear is everywhere. We couldn't find a, a proper place for it forever. <laughs> we Let got me hard know cases how you, all over. Yeah, hard cases all over. You know, it's just like, and then you find a place to put your stuff, and then all of a sudden there's more stuff. So I'm really grateful that you guys are here. Uh, shout out to Danielle. She's in the house too. She's in the corner over there. She's doing some behind the scenes stuff on Snapchat. By the way, what's your Snapchat handle on Snapchat? Uh, Serious Take Pro. Serious Take Pro. And that's on Instagram as well. Yes. Cool, cool, yes. cool. So I wanted to uh, catch up the and audience. Twitter. And Twitter. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> catch up the audience on who you are, where you come from. We're kind of cut from the same cloth, kind of. You're more formally trained in video, but you're a, a lover of video as well. Yeah, well, a little bit of background about me. So mm -hmm. about, oh my gosh, 11 years ago. Ooh, inspired by 11, okay. Oh, yeah, we'll <laughs> that get never to pops that, up we'll everywhere. get to that. It pops up everywhere. So yeah, about 11 years ago, you know, I started making silly YouTube videos when it first started coming out. I started getting in there. I probably could be like one of those YouTubers. Ooh, what's your right channel? Now. Well. Well, we have Sarah's Take Productions, but I took down the old <laughs> one, you, you know, I'm like sitting there singing and doing other stuff. But uh, when I was doing that, uh, mm. people saw, friends and family saw how passionate I was about video. Mm. It took me a good four years to really realize that I thought, well, maybe I could create a career out of something. They're like, I'm like, oh no, it's just a hobby. It's just a hobby. What were you doing oh, at that time? I was in the fitness industry for about eight years. I was a trainer and a nutritionist, and I went to school for that. And yeah. before that, I had actually gone to school for like graphic design and other things. I had gone to school a few different times to really try to figure it out what I was mm. passionate about. I was always creative, and the personal training part was never um, something that uh, I was like super passionate about. Mm. I just thought, because I was into fitness myself at that point, um, but there was a point about when I was 24 years old where I was actually hit by a car mm -hmm. and uh, that put me out of commission. I gained about 85 pounds in a year, uh, wasn't really able to train. I was embarrassed of how I looked, uh, things like that. And uh, from there, I started working at Curves Fitness Curves. for Women mm -hmm. because at that time, that 30 minute workout, you, the, all the trainers there weren't necessarily always fit. You know, it, it was like a place where people could feel comfortable to go in there. You know, they didn't have to have like start from square body. one. And be yeah, okay. so I started yeah. over, started doing that, lost about 75 pounds within two years. Congrats. And then I was really fit there for a while. And then when I started diving into this company, I was like, oh man. But just recently, now that I'm in California and there's sunny weather, I'm like, okay, I can get outside now. No more Seattle rain, no more like depression. Like, oh, it's just cloudy out, you know. <laughs> we were just in Seattle and I was like, dude, we went here on I the, saw your, on the grandest pick. time. It was like 95 three days. degrees. Yeah, 95 I was like, degrees. What, what? Okay, so <laughs> you came from Seattle. Were you always in Seattle? Yes, born and raised. So yes. how come you have business in California? How did that happen? Well, that was crazy. So. Yeah, I w well, back back up just a little bit. So I went to school at, at the Seattle Art Institute. Mm -hmm. um, I basically started doing more freelancing work. I was a video production man manager for a couple of corporate companies. One of them, I was uh, two years. I was manager for online educational courses for continuing education for mm -hmm. chiropractors and physical therapists. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the one that made their courses more creative for what you could do with that type of content. Yeah. And so they're excited about that. But that's a good niche. Yeah. Yeah, but the relationship, it wasn't, I just I would never felt like I could be super creative with it, and I Maybe, wasn't passionate yeah. about the yeah. content. And then I moved to another production company, and I was still working on building Serious Take Productions part-time and doing some freelance work. And then basically from there, I, the, I worked with Pyramid Productions in Redmond, Washington, which is right next door to Microsoft. So Microsoft, they were a vendor for Microsoft because uh, Microsoft only accepts specific like vendors for mm -hmm. like work. So. Mm -hmm. I produced with Microsoft. I was only there for about a few months or so, but during that time, I was just like, I had already quit the other job because I wanted to pursue Serious Take Productions, but that fear kind of struck in with the stability, at, you know, at, um, you know, <laughs> the stability part of it. And so, uh, so I was like, well, I'll take this this position for now, get some more experience, and then they said, okay, you're going to start producing for Starbucks and. Just some cool things, but um, yeah, I, I got into it and I was like, this is still not what I want to do. And mm. I, I literally, I had I'd quit that position and dove into Serious Take Productions. 
and I had started working on other projects. I created my own web series called Artist Encore, mm. where I interviewed um, like a recap of what artists from like American Idol, X Factor, The Voice, what they learned from their experience and how they implemented it into what they're doing now. Gotcha. So I started using Twitter and doing that, and Twitter was like my vice. And when I started using it, I started getting all these like celebrities <laughs> like following. And I was like, this is exciting. I was like, cool, they're like following me on Twitter. I can like DM them private messages. Yeah. Like I started creating this web series without even having like any like, that's how I, I roll. I just kind of dive in. Sometimes it's not the best, but <laughs> so I <laughs> dive in. I say, hey, I, we're, you know, Serious Take Productions is producing this web series. Would you be interested in it? So we got very small sponsorship from uh, Gabriel Cosmetics, which is also a friend and a client of ours. And I just kind of invested in, in ourselves to travel and go out and shoot these this web series. And we went out to like Florida and Texas and California and, and Seattle. And and uh, when I was wrapping that up, Danielle was like, so what's your goal with this? Like, <laughs> you do you understand that you're working with starving artists, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, cause I was thinking in my head, okay, these guys are like celebrities in their niche, you know, musicians, stuff like that and singers. And so we got hired for some music videos, but if they're not going on like MTV or they're not really big, they, they, they're, they're starving artists. They don't have a lot of money to mm -hmm. come in. And so after doing that show, we... This is key, the market. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so she was like, it was her idea. She goes, why don't we work with entrepreneurs? Because we were huge mm -hmm. on watching Shark Tank and I love Marcus Limonis from CNBC's The Profit. Like we were just really into just watching those shows. Like that's the only TV shows that we watch or something to do with business and entrepreneurship at that point. Right. And The Walking Dead. Right. Okay. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Can't forget. <laughs> so, like, ah. so, so yeah, we basically... Um, kind of shifted and we cre we started saying like started seeing online summits with podcasts and stuff and these entrepreneurs uh, basically interviewing these people and we saw Nick Unzor speak at Vince Reed's event mm. and we had actually already started filming our documentary Inspired by Eleven which we jumped into because we were inspired by Lori Grenier actually mm -hmm. so one day she finished the book by Lori and we started drawing like I logos and ideas like okay well let's interview entrepreneurs because I've produced other documentary films before oh. and so I started my first one in, in while I was in college actually I just kind of dove in and, and did it and it got into film festivals and other stuff and just kind of went from there cool. okay. but uh, yeah we basically started interviewing these entrepreneurs we were in Seattle and as we were doing that we specifically wrote out questions yeah. and like a lot of content like 11 questions each like so much content mm -hmm. like four hours a piece <laughs> but um so yeah we basically did that and as we were interviewing these entrepreneurs I didn't know like any of them other than like two of them she mm. followed one of the gals on our film Allison Maslin mm -hmm. and she was like we gotta do this and I started doing the research who was big in podcasting and learning about mm. lead generation and blogging and so I reached out to like, Chris Ducker because I saw I started using proper hashtags on stuff and finding out who was who was large in their community. So I didn't know who Pat Flynn was. I didn't know who John Lee Dumas was. Yeah. I like saw John Lee Dumas. I was like, entrepreneur on fire. I'm like, I love his avatar. I was like, him like, ah, I was a shark. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, started tweeting people. And that's how I, we started formulating that. And mm. then we took a lot out of our own pocket to just make the connections and build it. And the only person that had been in a film before was Pat. He was in a documentary. And so being in a documentary film was something new, different, and enticing for these influencers to want to be a part of. Yeah. And so when we started going on the journey and interviewing these people, it started clicking. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not a <laughs> freelancer. I'm not, you know, I want to build a business. I don't want to didn't necessarily be a shooter anymore. I don't want to shoot all the content. I love to direct. I love to edit. But mm -hmm. if you're running a business, you can't work in the business. You need ding, to work ding, on ding, the yeah. business. So, yep. so yeah, we yeah we started doing that process, and we we wanted we set out specific questions that we wanted to learn and implement into our own business. Mm. So it was smart on our end to like be like, okay, well, we were like, we were formulating the questions, and we're like, <laughs> is this too specific? Like, are they going to be like? is something we teach in our courses <laughs> so I was like well it's worth a shot right yeah, yeah. so yeah most of them answered all the questions and if they had you know issue with one more like, oh no worries don't need that right. just catered to their needs and 
So when we were learning from them, we're like, oh, then we started doing other things. We started connecting with other influencers. And I connected with Cole Hatter from Thrive. He, he's actually having his second Thrive event in San Diego. Yeah, you shot Thrive. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So story about that, though, that's cool, is as we're building these relationships, and everyone just kept saying, provide value, reach out to these people, do things for free, like just build, like because there's there's no reason why these influencers need to hire me, yeah. like work with me. Why do they trust me? What what do I have to offer that's different? Right. And so I you know showed them some of my work, and of course there's creativity, and it's always connecting through stories. Right. And so that's where our brand led, though, is after we shot Thrive, and we actually reached out. We drove from Seattle to Vegas. Like, wow. you don't even want to know. And I think it was like, like God sent or something, but there was a moment where we were like, oh, there's like one last exit before you really get up over these hills. Yeah. And we we're like, well, let's stop and get something to eat. Yeah. So we ate. And then after that, we like looked down the freeway and everything was just backed up. So moments before that, the mudslides basically just started going. So our car could have been one of those wow. cars that got stuck. There was like over 30 cars that got stuck. So it definitely happened around that time. Always stop and eat. Yeah. <laughs> when you're hungry. <laughs> when you're hungry. And then we built that relationship. He hired us to, to film his branding trailer this year, and he just rehired us to come out for Thrive 2.0 in San Diego. So it's, nice. it's about building those relationships. And a lot of people are like, I can't do this for free. You know, like just, well, why not? Like, yeah. what do you have to lose? You exactly. Know? <laughs> I mean, when you're trying to establish a brand, it's like, yeah. here, here I am. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to give you my best. And that's yeah. it. That's all you can do. And it was people like Cole that made us start thinking. He goes, he put a seed in my head. He said, we went and shot his branding trailer at his house in yeah. uh, Cota de Casa in Orange County. And, and he goes, when are you guys moving down? <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, what? <laughs> because we had been thinking about it. He's yeah. like, well, yeah, if you come down more, I'd love to work with you more. Yeah. And then people from the, the film started saying the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Vince Reed uh, decided to help us with things and kind of partner with us on specific products. Yeah. Same with Allison Maslin. I'm now the director once a month of her Ally and You online show. Nice. So it just made sense to, to jump ship all the stuff that we were doing in Seattle. We kind of shifted our business and our brand, we had our whole brand, Serious Take Productions, mm -hmm. uh, rebranded the last six months. And so our whole purpose is to connect through storytelling. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that all of our videos inspire, they show our persons, you know, our, our clients, brand, them, if it's a, a single brand or an identity, a person or a product that we're showcasing, it has to tell a story. You want to be able to watch a video and connect with it in some way and just automatically watch it and be like, man, I want to know that person, or I want to work with that person, or I want to try that product. Right. Like, it's almost like a sales video, but you're not even, like, selling. Obviously, you have your call to action at the end. Right. But we just want to inspire. And so through, like, creative storytelling. Right. And music is key, things like that, and uh, just having the creative shots. But That's all it is. And that's why we just were like, <laughs> let's just move. And so, yeah, and we started doing events. And How long has it been since you guys came here to California? We left Washington on it's pretty April, recent, right? April yeah. 22nd. And, Crazy. Uh, but we literally got the keys to our place on June 3rd. So June oh, my God. So, <laughs> so we were living out of suitcase. This month. Still. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Basically so, this month. Yeah, but we just, we've done a lot. So... Very um, cool. But that's kind of how we got down here, and now we just we've jumped into so much. <laughs> like I love it. They're uh, supporting other entrepreneurs too. Is is um, our biggest thing in connecting people with mm -hmm. with others? Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I do that people realize. They're like, you could just be a publicist. I was like, I just like to connect people because I I have that that feeling and that hope and desire that other people will connect us as well. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it it really does come back to you. Like it doesn't always you don't always see it, you know, and you can't expect people to do things for you. Right. But we've started to see things happen and when we do something for somebody else, it just kind of comes back around. Being a rising tide. Exactly. Right. And so that's just kind of been how our motto is like, you know, we just watch people rise and everyone's different, but, uh, you know, we just are very humble and, you know, we don't, we just surround ourselves with positive, like-minded people, right. you know, and as we grow together, you know, don't don't get a big ego as you're rising because yes. you, you know, be, it happens with people and it status happens. and whatever. It happens. Yeah. But yeah, we just want to keep it real with everyone and yeah. just uh, build those relationships. So. I love it. Yeah. Love it. So let's take a break and we'll get into uh, Inspired by Eleven. I'd like to take this time to thank one of my sponsors, Clarity. 
They are a wellness company based on nutrigenomics and epigenetics. Nutrigenomics is nutrients for your genes, while epigenetics is gene expression. I've been taking one of their products called Calibrate for a while now, and the biggest result that I've seen is that I'm a stronger climber. I've never been able to summit the way I've been summiting before, and I don't get hungover. <laughs> it's replaced my coffee in the morning, but I still enjoy drinking coffee when I feel like it. I love to mix it with coconut water when I have it, and it tastes awesome, no lie. And the company and its ideals is something that I truly believe in. Check it out at clarity.com slash Meglevu. Thanks. All right, we're back from our break, and I wanted to kind of switch gears and talk about Inspired by Eleven, the film that you made, and that's kind of how we ran into each other or knew about each other. Um, the first, I was like, are you coming out to my film? Yes, <laughs> I know, and I was like, uh, yes, I'm trying to make it, and, and we were we were kind of going back and forth on the DM, and um, things were busy last year. I was getting married, so there was a lot of yeah. crap going around. Congratulations. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, and finally, I was able to come out, and we were able to meet in person as we've been chatting over uh, uh, One Facebook. of the busiest nights of my life. Busiest nights ever. I was like, ever. hold that thought. I was, so I was trying to talk to like, everybody. Ah. <laughs> and that was a, a very successful event in itself, the, the premiere, the showing. Mm -hmm. So this road to making this film, number one, why the film? Mm -hmm. um, I think you covered it a little bit, but perhaps, you know, kind of stemming from Danielle's input on, okay, maybe we should target entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe talk a little bit about Danielle's involvement, because I know mm -hmm. it's so important to have people in your corner and entrepreneurship, if you're a, a solo entrepreneur, can be so lonely, mm -hmm. especially if the immediate people around you don't recognize your vision or, they, I mean, they'll say like, hey, we support you, but they don't get it. They're not yeah. in it, right? Exactly. So it's not so, in it I, until you do it. yeah, they're not in it until they do it. And so I always think about, man, as I'm moving into that space of stepping away from service based business, there's so always gonna be service a part of business. Mm -hmm. But like yourself, I find myself, uh, well, getting older and so I can't film the way that I used to. I can't hold all the equipment like I used to. That's why I don't do wedding photography anymore. Mm -hmm. And so having somebody in your corner who knows the language, who knows the day-to-day, -day, having a maybe a partner, it's something that I'm even thinking about. Um, Sean Cannell was on the show talking about his partner in a different venture as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe talk about your partnership and how that's changed your dynamic. Um, and yeah, and take it from there. Let's see. Inspired by Eleven. So, um, yeah, but first off, what Inspired by Eleven means to us is a project that we interviewed 11 successful entrepreneurs, and our whole purpose is to uh, inspire, educate, and instigate others to, to take action within their niche, really find their way to niche down and just basically take action. Because a lot of people, they get inspired, and, you know, even we had a rooftop screening last night down in Encinitas. Um, Very cool, yeah. World Native and uh, the Startup Garage hosted this event right on the beach right there on a rooftop, and mm -hmm. there was uh, over 35 people there, and they had a waiting list of over 60 people that wanted to attend, but we couldn't fit everybody on the rooftop, right? But, like, with the, the what we did there, though, is that gal actually saw our film and she liked it so much, and she builds an actual world native. She actually builds a community of entrepreneurs to get together for different networking events and things like that. Yeah. So um, I totally went off like where I was going with this. <laughs> <laughs> the rooftop screening of entrepreneurs. Yeah, or, uh, um, it's by yeah. heaven. Yeah. So we, um, but yeah. First off, though, I'm gonna jump back a little bit. But um, yeah, it was just a, a crazy experience in general but we just wanted to inspire people to to do things so it's cool that like there's people like that that actually watched our film and said you know i'm going to take action after this but then we had people like uh recently say yeah I, yeah i could watch watch your film and stuff like that but i haven't taken any action since i watched it i was inspired to do it but oh that's right it was somebody that mentioned something at the book launch party that had been to our screening as well and and he said He's very like, yeah. common. Very common. Yeah, he just said he's like I was so inspired, but I haven't even actually implemented any of the the tips that that we learned. And I was like, well, it's all yourself, you know. You just you take the time. Don't make an excuse. Uh, commit, you, people, yeah. you know, commit. You know, people are say they're always busy. That's just an excuse. You mm -hmm. know, time management is is key, and mm -hmm. just uh, implementing and 
asking for help. As and we well. can link to the film in the, in the description of this video. Is that correct? Are you still yes. doing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. People cool. can actually go to inspiredby11.com. Cool. Uh, inspiredby11. One dot com. One. <laughs> yeah, the, the number not, not spelled out. We interviewed these people, like I said before, a little bit and just uh, learned to implement from there. We had hours of content, so it was, people don't know this though, so this is a crazy story. So we took nine months to do the production and mm -hmm. get all the interviews um, and a couple months of pre-production of reaching out and getting contracts together and talking to their attorneys and all that stuff that people don't really understand yeah. like that goes on for mm -hmm. like larger productions because uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to lock people in. I had got people that rejected me that said no, and then I have ways to connect and offer more value to get them interested, to uh -huh. get them saying yes to, to being on a project. Right. And um, we, uh, let's see, what was I? Well, I'm like, <laughs> Pre-production, production, yeah. yeah. Crazy production. story. So oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like so on the go. Much. Sorry, I asked you like five billion <laughs> questions. <laughs> oh, like, so uh, yeah, no, so the crazy story is though we had production for nine months, yeah. and then my goal was to enter it into Sundance Film Festival. And, and, did, yeah. and my goal at some point in my life is to have a, a feature-length film in there, um, most likely fiction. I've been working on a feature-length script of a film for the last few years that, wow. that I'd love to just Ooh. produce and direct. And it's a suspense thriller. Mm -hmm. And that's just off on some other page. But uh, so I turned around. I was like, well, I'm going to enter this into Sundance. But here we are in Portland, Oregon, three hours away from Seattle, where I've been like starting to draft a little bit, but not really dive, dove in yet. Yeah. We finished filming our, our last entrepreneur on a Saturday in like n afternoon. So it drive back to Seattle probably 7 p.m. at night. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's due tomorrow. <laughs> at midnight for Sundance. Yeah. I sat down and I edited for like 27 hours or oh. something. <laughs> oh, man. And so I, by the point I was done, I was done at 11 p.m., but with render and export time and all that stuff with really long, it's a 93-minute film. Yeah. So if you can imagine. So I went in, I had to go into IMDb and like put things in. And, I got to ask you on oh. what that old thing looks like because I feel like that old thing would just like crash. And you have oh. 93 minutes of film in there, and you're just like, I was, oh. I was like sweating. I was like watching my watch. I was like, this isn't gonna work. This is gonna work. Control like, S, Control S, like Control two, S. I was like, manifest <laughs> it, manifest it. 20% uh, is gonna be at 99% in, you know, soon. So Ooh, we shit. went and did that, and I, I got it to upload, and I submitted it at 11.59, right before it hit. <laughs> really? Uh, I, we weren't accepted <laughs> into the done. film festival, but the, the fact that I hit my goal to do that yeah. and feel accomplished in that way. Um, it's like people, a movie. People, yeah. <laughs> people don't even, they think, how'd you, how'd you do that? And like, yeah. you know, I, don't, I haven't really told that story much, but when you watch it, you wouldn't think that it was put together in like 27 hours, right? No it was way. probably was about 40 hours, probably because I started, started drafting out, but yeah. really just putting the stories together and connect them the way I do it. I don't just put like one entrepreneur, then the next, then the next. It's, it cuts back and you forth. You have a storyboard, yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. So if like Pat Flynn's talking about his why, which is his family and mm -hmm. the freedom to be able to spend time with his family, mm -hmm. and you know, Allison Maslin's like, Talking about that, and other people are like, uh, Amy Yamada, it's like, what's your why? Mm -hmm. You know, it, we start tying those together. You know, like if someone's talking about blogging, and then it goes into like Chris Ducker's, like, he's a blogger, you know, virtual CEO. Right. You, you just got to tell that story, you know, so it's not just boring, you know? Yes. So I had to pay attention to that. And it's that a process, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we, we did that, and then um, Danielle, she basically, so we're, um, We've been partners for about three and a half years, but she basically, I was the one to encourage her to jump ship from the corporate job, and uh, it was it was a rough time. Yeah. Like she's used to stability. She worked her way up into management uh, at the retail level with Marshalls, so yeah. she all of a sudden became you know operations manager for the last two and a half years and managed over sixty plus people. So she's super. You know, she's amazing with people. Like, she's very um, empathetic and just can manage people really well. And then there's me that I'm like, just do it. Do <laughs> dominant. I'm not empathetic. I, I know that. Like, we butt heads on things, and she's kind of taught me along the way with things. But she, we've, like, literally are so opposite in ways that we complement each other so well. Fill the gaps. When the, yeah. yeah. And so, like, it's good to have that extra eye when I'm, like, doing, like, a video. Like, 
the video will be awesome, but she will see something that I might not have seen or just a little tweak, mm -hmm. and I'll be like, oh, I, I agree with her. Like, mm -hmm. all, most of the time I agree with her on things, and she comes up with a lot of the ideas of things. Like, I'm more the creative and the action taker, mm -hmm. and if she comes up with an idea, then I feed off that. And I'm like, okay, well, let's write this out on a storyboard or, or whatever. So, like, we're... <laughs> I tend to be a little bit more ADHD, and when we hired a business coach the last year or so, yeah. they're like, you got to have clarity, you got to focus <laughs> on that one thing, and Danielle's a big reader. I she, think you and I are similar. <laughs> We're kind of like, you know, quick starts, like, yeah. let's go do it, like, yeah. this is how it's going to work, and we need yeah. somebody in the cloud saying, hey, this is... Calm, yeah, down, calm down, come back down, yeah. focus on that one thing, and right. she read that book, The One Thing, mm -hmm. and everyone's always like, oh, did you read that book? I'm like, I don't read. I'm, <laughs> I do. I, I, I just, yeah. I, I'll watch videos. I'm just more visual. I, yeah. just, I don't yeah. sit still. I'm like, bird. I see you. <laughs> like, <Bird>. squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, but she's been so good and, and she's been so supportive through this because we've definitely had our ups and downs in, in our relationship because it, we've been focusing so much on business, but then there's stressful levels and people that, that don't necessarily go through all the, the, parts of entrepreneurship of like really like you know your income like just mm -hmm. and then like that stability if you you have things come in like this last year um we signed up for uh, coaching with nick unsworth's life on fire movement and so it's not that i didn't know how to do things it was more like getting a little bit more clear and structure a little bit more structure yeah. and that little push almost like inspiring so we went to ignite in january yeah. and it was great for us and we just took the plunge. We're like, we're going to hire a business coach because everyone kept saying we need a business coach. Yeah. And so, but it was cool because we built the relationships through the networking and we made our money back. We spent thousands on coaching. Yeah. And they always say, in our film, they would say, Vince Reed talks about hiring a mentor. He spends thousands on mentors. And people are like, I can't afford that. Is it, don't say the word, I can't. Mm -hmm. You know, just figure out how you're going to do it. We mm -hmm. invested in like Infusionsoft, or we call it Confusionsoft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm like, oh, she does that. She does all that stuff. She's like great with that. She does all the social media management stuff. Yeah. She's like learning like how to use Snapchat recently for business. It's yeah. not just for teens anymore. People right. need to like realize that you can do so many cool things. And now that they're, we just started implementing, I don't know if people know this, but last, this last week or so, you started being able to record videos in your replies on Facebook. And so, mm. like, so we've been actually personalizing videos. I don't know about this. Yeah. But I so, do that on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so it's cool. So on Facebook, you literally, so she's so sneaky. Morning, I know, people. right? They just throw all this it is stuff like, out. <laughs> but yeah, so she's been really the one that's kind of kept me grounded at times. Because if, if I just... I could do like triathlons or something like all, you yeah. know, just go. I'm not a strong swimmer, but <laughs> um, let's just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, right? And so yeah, it's it's been crazy. But without her, I I don't know where. I know I would just keep trucking away, and I just troubleshoot on things. One of my old corporate jobs, they called me troubleshooter because <laughs> I would literally be that person that would figure out why missing footage was missing and how to recover things and mm. get certain programs like. I would just like save their butts yeah. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> with clients. And so, but I always just figure things out. Yeah. But the, the process and being able to have a, another person there, like it helps the process speed up a little bit. Of Versus being we, reactive, like, yeah. That's how I am, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, there's a problem. Let me go fix it. Instead yeah. of coming up into the clouds or our, like satellite view mm -hmm. and saying, this is what we can do here, this is how this works, and, and ultimately putting out a strategy, mm -hmm. right? Okay, cool. That's yeah. that's amazing. Shout out to Danielle. Now I'm thinking I need like a partner or something because like it's so hard to do everything by yourself. And talk about that a little bit. Transitioning from doing everything yourself as a mm -hmm. solopreneur, doing all the filming, all the editing, mm -hmm. all the whatever, right? All the lead capture, and now coming out of that. And you were talking about you're training people in your yeah. company now. Yeah. And how are you making that possible? Because I'm sure like it's hard. Even <laughs> that, like. My, myself, I'm like, I'm, that's my goal. Obviously, I can't shoot forever. I'm going to get old. <laughs> what? And I'm already, you like, I already, youth yet? I already feel it. Like, I, like the three hours that I, I shot from Rondos. Yeah. Pulled I was like, oh, rigs, God. you know, I got, like, the Ronin. I don't even have all that fancy equipment. <laughs> and I'm just like, my back hurts after three hours. I can't go back to that. Mm -hmm. So how do I remove myself? And, and I think a lot of people have that same 
problem, especially in service-based business, where you are your art. Mm -hmm. It's because of your eye that these pictures show up the way that they look, right? That the, the shot looks the way it looks. Mm -hmm. And then getting people to train, and training people <laughs> to, to give up what they want almost, to come work for you. Like, that is so hard. Like, I feel like we're doing this for our photography company mm -hmm. because, yeah, you can't shoot forever. So how are you guys doing that? How are you making that transition happen? That's like trial and error, too. So yeah. I think it's important to find those people that are already passionate about where what <laughs> you're doing as well. It's, well, so if it's photography mm -hmm. for your base, you got to find those passionate photographers. And I actually know some that are, are passionate about photography, and they've basically just started. But they don't want to run businesses? The, so a lot of people have that employee mindset. They mm -hmm. don't want to take the leadership or the initiative to do that or they like the freelance life right where they're like they consider that them being their own boss but they're still being hired by people and you're basically you get basically, to control where at least where you're going exactly but yeah. they're still controlling you the the rest of the aspect right right and so i always thought well after i started doing this film i was like i want to be my own boss but i always knew that in my head but we started what we did first was uh, actually because I'm a graduate of the Art Institute, mm -hmm. so I became friends <laughs> with one of the creative directors there who was also an administrator that was connected to all the internships. Yeah. So this guy literally just starts, the last two years has been sending us, it, we were in Seattle, yeah. just started sending us applicants for motion graphics artists, for editors, oh. videographers, and we found three people that we, we really liked their like work ethic, you know, for the most part, and their creative eye, and and uh, so hit up the schools. I would say if you need somebody first, get the internship. Most of the creative schools, like the Art Institute, have three or four month internships that they must have anyways. Ah. And you can always tell when there's a student, you know, some like when I went back, I was 29 years old. Yeah, and so. Back to school? Mm hmm Oh, wow. For the artist student. So that dates my age a little bit, so I look a little bit younger. Okay. Yes, you do. <laughs> so I'm in my 30s. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went back to school at 29 and got my degree in 2012 mm -hmm. and basically started my business while I was in school. Mm -hmm. But I remember a couple of my teachers, not that I felt, I kind of felt sorry for the other kids when the teachers would say this to me, but they were... Um, one of them literally walked up to me in lighting class and you know I had one other guy that was with me that I actually got him a job or referred him at the corporate job I was with and yeah. so we worked together and he was around my age or a year younger so we almost understood each other because it was a lot of nothing against teenagers but a lot of them weren't taking it as seriously some of them coming out of high school I haven't lived a little bit. Yeah, and so I had already gone to school like twice for different things like graphic design. Like you're here, you're here to learn. You're yeah, like, take yeah. care of business, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So here I am doing all this work, and one of the instructors came up one day. He goes, he was very monotone. Like I don't even know how to describe him. Clear like a character. Like, he looked like Super Mario, <laughs> but he's Italian. He's Italian. Yeah, but it's like monotone. But like you didn't know. Like it just had a streaked face and. Yeah. Um, it was funny later on after he was actually let go after 17 years and he actually came back to me to see if I had any work and Whoa. I was like, Whoa. I was like, this is really so odd. So crazy. But he came up to me and he said, he's like, you're the only one that's going to make it. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean by this? I was like, thank you. But we started getting editors and stuff. So they did the three month, um, internship yeah. and then we started bringing them on as contractor base first because okay. you don't necessarily need to bring on full-time employees yet if right. you don't if you're not at that point yeah. unless you like need like that really like that the business partner aspect so yeah we, we had a lot of them just getting credit and we would kind of train them on the vision that we had and then by doing that with them for three to four months then they already kind of knew what we were trying to to focus on through right. connecting through storytelling and creative cinematography and one of our videographers up there he actually uh, him and his fiance are going to be moving to california we inspired them after oh. their lease is up this next year yeah. so i was like well you know reach out to me and see where we're at because he's very much a director type mm. very professional it's a great eye for cinematography i'd love for him to like join our team um, and so i'm seeing where you go and i'm seeing the track we, we now have yeah. two other editors um that 
that we've been kind of training and showing them stuff, one of them are shifting out of one project and have another one come in because it wasn't quite the right fit. And yeah. that's the, the hard part of it. So we do online uh, post-production for successful entrepreneurs, online shows similar to like Gary Vaynerchuk shows. Mm -hmm. And so we have a couple Australian clients that we work with. And basically, one of our editors isn't as detail-oriented as me. Obviously, he just graduated a year ago. He, he might not just be as passionate about it as me, but doesn't necessarily see it the mm -hmm. way I see it. So I created a, a first episode for him to mimic, and um, you know, the client came back to us after he had created a few, few episodes. We had wished that they just would have been honest from the get-go. We would have just nipped it in the butt there. But mm -hmm. it put us back because I turned around and I said, look, let me make it right. I'll do the post-production, but here I am jumping back into the business to do that. But I created I created an episode for him. He goes, this is it. Yeah. You nailed it. Like, yeah. no no adjustments needed. Like, And I created three more for him, and that we have one more episode that we're working on right now with him yeah. to wrap it up. But I'm going to be showing our other editor that we just brought on, like, the stuff and really we just take calls and stuff because a lot of the editors work remotely mm -hmm. and so we don't we don't have an actual studio space we don't we try to be as frugal as we can to think what do we need to do like we in Seattle we filmed a lot of stuff out of our condo in the beginning we oh. had a whole setup yeah. that we just like had our stool chairs and set up and props and lighting, lighting everything yeah, yeah. yeah we just made this living space like it was cool because we had like a fireplace and stuff so we did like fireside chats yeah. we had another area with like stools and then we had like a couch so you, you, we had three sets within the condo space like we <laughs> were just awesome. dove in to yeah. just shooting and we had clients that were so excited to come over and do that because they were so excited to see what it feels we were like doing. a studio yeah yeah and so we try to be as frugal as we can to build the company yeah. and build a team so yeah go out there and get interns first i mm. totally suggest it See if any of them match. Yeah, at the schools. Yeah. Yes, do it. So that's where we started. Right now we have um, a who few. Do you, who do you talk to? How do you make that connection happen if you didn't go to school there for that particular? Like, I didn't go to school for photography or for film. Mm -hmm. It's just something I'm passionate about. How would you go about making that connection happen when you have zero connection? Well, I would find out who the person is that's in charge of the internship program okay. there and just get through there and then literally get on a phone call with them. Don't yeah. do emails, get them on the call, lock them in. Yeah. People are like, oh, well, I emailed them. They, they, they didn't get back to me. Yeah, they there's didn't. no hustle there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So whatever you need to do to get in touch with them. I like when I do like leads and sales and stuff, like mm -hmm. I probably lock people in 95% of the time because I'm on the phone with them mm. and I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. And mm. I tell them the process of everything, what we're going to do. They get inspired and you, you do the same thing with somebody like that asking for, you know, just it's get them different. inspired yeah. for like an intern to want to be inspired. Right. So it's, you don't date on an email. Exactly. You date in person, right? <laughs> so it's the same thing. I know, dating through text. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. It's like, well, some people it's like do. Well, I've heard stories of people now proposing via text. I'm like, wow. Where's the That's a different going? world. <laughs> so That's yeah, a different I, world. Yeah, I, would, I would say first, yeah, basically reach Love out it. there, yeah. build a team, get people that are passionate because there are young individuals that are willing to do things for free or or a lower cost to get mm -hmm. you going. We started hiring some of the contractors in California, but you know, some of their rates are like hundred dollars plus an hour. And it's I California. turned around, yeah, and I turned around and I said, look, we're more so like st startup business. I said, I love what you do. Would you be open to having set rates yeah. per project? Yeah. And if you feel it's fair, then let me know. We'll pay for your gas or whatever if there's travel, yeah. all that stuff, and we put in per diem if it's like long shoots or travel. And so some of them are like, okay. And then we realized, you know, a lot of them start charging because they have their own gear. Yeah. So we purchased all of our own gear now. And, and you so, rent it out to them? Yeah. Uh, so I always wondered see, about that. It's you got to get insurance and stuff. I'd rather them have their own gear and you have insurance. You know what I mean? That's well, that's what we do with our shooters. It's yeah. it's true, but so. But if I really wanted to work with this one guy that's like, well, I charge, you know, 1250 a day and or whatever, I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that because we're not going to make any money, money back, right? Yeah. And I was like, especially if there's like two or three of you on a set or if it's an event or something. Right. So maybe we'll give a rate for 500 a day, you know, mm -hmm. but we have all the equipment. There's like a director on site, you know, other stuff like that. Because if you have to have multiple people, depending gotcha. on what the budget is. Yeah. 
you know, you got to start off lower. And of course, the ones with experience, you want them, but yeah. start off down here and occasionally bring on those people that you trust that are at a higher rate, if yeah. it makes sense, it makes as long sense. as you raise your prices more. Gotcha. Yeah. So as we come to a close, where are you guys headed right now? Like what's next for Serious Take Productions and yourself? Like what are you and Daniel working on right now? I know you got a lot of things cooking in the lab, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what's what's next for you guys? And then where can we find you? Where can we get in touch yeah, with you? Yeah, so we, um, we're currently working on our, our funnel that involves the, the book for Inspired by Eleven. Danielle's ah, been working on book. her book. So yeah, we're in the process of we've been. Uh, she's been interviewing editors mm. and trying to get someone to format it and get that because it's her first book. So she's super excited. She's oh, been, you're not co-writing it or anything. Uh, I've told, I've recorded like stories. So, okay. but she's written the whole thing herself. Nice. And it is a it's a little bit of a mixture of some of the the tips, um, extra content that's not in the film mm -hmm. that's in the book that have inspired us. And she talks a little bit more about our journey through it, plus her own journey um, and things. So it's, 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 it's a good story. So it's a good mix, it. probably over uh, 20,000 words. <laughs> nice. And uh, so that will be in our funnel. We're okay. going to have a funnel with that. And it will also be online for sale as well. And that will go in a funnel that has the book. And then we have the, the film. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll have a product that uh, has a lot of extra content, valuable content from these entrepreneurs, plus more of like a recap of what some of them are of up to now mm -hmm. and, and some like secret tips that um, people would want to know from, plus the Q&A and stuff from the actual premiere. Gotcha. So a lot of extra content that's really valuable information. And that will go into to that funnel. And from there, uh, I kind of mentioned And this. Danielle's working on the funnel. She's just doing that herself. We're actually working with Vince Reed on, okay. on the funnel. And uh, I'm working on all the content for the, Very cool. the package. We're editing the videos for the summit. And stuff. Very cool. Yeah, so we're doing that. And then well, I talked about you, or I mentioned this to you, mm -hmm. but our goal is to put together uh, an event that's, like, at this moment, I was thinking the importance of video. Yes, and I'm down. <laughs> so, yeah, I plan on reaching out to some, you know, high-level video experts mm -hmm. and put together a large event that really gets, like, more hands-on stuff, like, really coaching on some specific things and then have some sort of package where we can either go into some intensive mastermind sessions with right. really showing them as, w as well as, you know, throwing in packages for, like, branding trailers mm -hmm. and just really getting people's brand and vision out there for video, getting people comfortable on video, doing right. more live streams, doing more Snapchats, you know, learning everything in that that side to even the, the video marketing side of yes. the business. So we, you know, and it, as we were talking, we were saying like, nobody's really done this yet. And yes. I was like, I know we can do this. Yeah. And we've connected with the right people. And I'm just going to take lunch with some of these people. and. Talk to Vince Reed a little bit more about it too, because I want him to do more on the Facebook live stream and, and you know just yeah we want to we awesome. want to do that. I so, love it. I and, love it. Yeah, Can't for, wait. And for anyone that that's interested in learning more about us and seeing some of what our like I didn't even talk about our products. We have like branding trailers where mm. they connect through storytelling. We did John Lee Dumas's branding trailer right. for the Freedom Journal. Yeah. Not the Kickstarter video, but the actual branding trailer. If you yeah. go to his website, it's I've a, seen it. a little mm -hmm. clip of him, and then it's our trailer, and then he has the Kickstarter. So we have the drone shots in our video. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah, we have, we have really cool drone shots. We use 4K drones for a lot of our, our videos, and we were, did Cool Hatter's branding trailer. Uh -huh. We just released an EPK for one of our Australian clients that she, she's connecting with a lot of high-level influencers. We're filming an event for her yeah. in LA next month where she's invited people like Marie Forleo. Nice. Lots of cool things, and uh, yeah, you can, they, anyone can go to seriestakeproductions.com and follow us on Facebook, uh, like you said earlier, Twitter, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Snapchat. All the things. At, at Serious Take Pro, and uh, yeah, it's just, we have some cool videos that we post all the time, you know, cool people that we've worked with, and yeah. we love working with creatives as well as entrepreneurs that really either need help with it, mm. a, a thing that we do differently than a lot of uh, the video production companies that we actually deep dive into storyboarding to really pull out that vision. That is the matter. It's like the it's like it's, the research. It's like exactly yeah, like know? we take those calls. We we figure it out. We don't just yeah. say, okay, here's your video because I've had people come to me that say they've done that and they're not happy with it. We want to make sure that they're happy with it. We will right. make it right, right. until. 
until it's It's like finished. a movie. Exactly. But you're like, Shh, it's got to be That's a minute or whatever, call right? It trailers. Right? So it's like kind of a yeah, trailer exactly. for, for your, your brand. Exactly. Love it. So, yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching uh, our interview, my chat with uh, Tamara Thompson from Serious Take Productions. We talked about a lot of stuff. And um, in, this, in this video or in the description of this video, I've actually broken it up. So you can either find uh, the behind the scenes stuff, you can find her link to her thing and what she's doing and what she's got going on. Um, you can find the link to her film Inspired by Eleven. Um, and you can follow their journey. Um, feel free to follow them on all the social networks. They're in the description. And um, if you are watching this interview and you're thinking, man, I know video is important. I know um, that it's basically just me hitting record, but you're still stuck. You're still in that fearful state of like, well, what do I create? Like, how do I create it? What does that look like? What's the structure like? How do I actually get people into my business model, into my funnel using video? If you're still having these questions, what I'd love for you to do is to hit that link in the description or here in the screen, and it will take you to this little package that I'm giving away, which is how to get started with video, even if you're deathly, deathly afraid of it, and even though uh, you don't have any time. So I think those are the two factors that really get in the way of people uh, util utilizing video and taking advantage of video full force is the fear and the time management part and really those things can be mixed together and i've created a little package for people after all you know being in the video space a little bit and working with clients and and uh, speaking about video i would love for you to go and check that out okay so don't be fearful don't worry about time if you are committed and you see the value of video click on that link in the description or on the screen right here and it will take you to that package where you can get started today Okay, so good things. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Stay tuned for next time here in the lab and we'll see you next time. Once again, my name is Meg, reminding you, get in the lab. We'll see ya. Uh, we're live right now with uh, Tamara from uh, Serious Take Productions. We just finished right. and- uh, You got your book yet? <laughs> I do, just saying, it's so cool. Just saying. Uh, we just finished an interview on uh, Get in the Lab, so that's gonna be up in about two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. So we're actually gonna do a lot. This is gonna be a behind the scenes camera. Um, and I'm gonna move it over there, but we're gonna go live on uh, Danielle's camera. So Danielle's phone. So let's move yours this over here. <laughs> yours or yours or yeah, Danielle's? Let's go uh, yeah, let's make it on yours. So there we go. Position this. I, just, I dropped my phone the other time. You gotta be in the shot, Danielle. You gotta be like.